I have been collecting Star Wars The Black Series 6 inch action figures since 2015. I've always enjoyed the line, but the one thing that is sorely lacking is world building. Hi, I'm Justin from Out of the Basement, and what I'm going to be talking about today is my Black Series 3D printing journey. If you are new to the channel or if this is the first Out of the Basement video you are watching, we are not a 3D printing YouTube channel or a customs channel for that matter. We are a channel that focuses heavily on Star Wars The Black Series. I wanted to say that at the beginning in case anyone is expecting like guidelines or a tutorial of some kind because 3D printing is in the title. You're not going to find that here. I simply wanted to talk to our audience about what I've been up to and my journey so far with 3D printing associated with the Black Series. Like I said, I've been collecting the line since 2015, and while I have always been a pretty big fan of the line, the world building is sorely missing. It totally makes sense that the Vintage Collection, which is both a cheaper and a smaller scale of figures, gets the world building. They get extra accessories, play sets, vehicles, dioramas, etc. That makes perfect sense, because to me, the Black Series has always been about the appreciation for the design or the character just having more what usually should be a definitive look of the character and focusing more on the engineering that goes into the sculpt and the articulation. But I'm also a fan of world building, so it's always been, you know, a tiny little hole in my collecting heart. I still prefer 6 inch, you know, 1 12th action figures. That's just my preference. I like the scale. And again, I like that the Black Series is more about the appreciation of the character, not necessarily the world building that you'll find in the Vintage Collection. But I say, why not both? The reason I wanted to get into 3D printing is to complement pre-existing figures that are in my collection. To me, it is not so much about making figures that we don't have from scratch or doing customs. I much prefer to collect official releases as far as the actual figures go. So I'm not looking to make like a super battle droid or a droidica or anything like that. Although Hasbro, please get on those two droids. I am more interested in complementing figures that are already in the collection by dioramas or just little things to enhance the display. I have been heavily inspired by other creators as well, namely Landspeed or Luke. I have a feeling I am going to be name dropping them a lot in this video. I am a subscriber to their Patreon. If you're not familiar with Landspeed or Luke stuff, follow them on Instagram. They're always posting these insane dioramas and accessories and world building display pieces. It's just incredible stuff. The thing that made me pull the trigger is actually this guy right here, Figger and Dan. We are huge original trilogy fans, particularly the background alien stuff has always been like my cup of tea with Star Wars. And I got six of these guys, including Nalen Sheel, and there was a post, again from Landspeed or Luke, about the band stage, and something just ignited in me to where I wanted that to be like my first project. It just seemed like the perfect time to jump into 3D printing because this Figger and Dan was like a monumental release for us. Fast forward a little bit to my birthday and my awesome girlfriend Lucy actually got me a 3D printer and the rest is history. So now let's go ahead and take a look at my setup. All right, here is my setup. It's in kind of what is considered our craft room. Here is the 3D printer all built. It is the Ender 3 V2. It took about two hours to set up. I was like carefully watching this tutorial video to set it up. It took me about two hours to get the whole thing set up. There's the Ender logo. Again, the Ender 3 V2. I am going to put everything in the description of this video. There is a spool of white in here from a recent project. This is the brand I use, Overture Matte PLA 3D Printer Filament. I get this off Amazon. It's about $20 a pop. It is a 1.75 millimeter PLA filament. Down here, you know, you got your bed, you got your extruder here. Really cool little setup. I also wanted to show you the different colors that I use just in case you're deciding to get in. For some Star Warsy colors, we have space gray, light gray, 
light brown that is like such a Tatooine brown. We have two spools of light brown. I believe this is called dark brown or chocolate brown. Black, we got another spool of black in there. This one's fresh. We have white. And for the final three, I actually have some fun colors for some coasters I'm gonna do. We have blue, green, and yellow. And over here, we have a spoiler for Nate's Christmas present. I took a fresh spool of black and I did as many hexagon stands as I could do out of one spool. So we have all these hexagon display stands. And I printed him his own little cantina set for Han Solo and Greedo. But yeah, this is the setup. Just have it on this table and you know, got your filament, got your printer. And then I also just use like one of these boxes for like tools and like little painting supplies and glue and stuff. There it is. This is Landspeeder Luke's website. Here you can find all of the different files that they have created and put on their Patreon. There is amazing stuff. I would also highly recommend following them on Instagram, but you can browse around. Here's the Cantina set that I printed. Click on that and it will bring you to their Patreon where it is locked because I'm not signed in. I am a patron though, and if you are getting into 3D printing, I would highly, highly recommend Landspeeder Luke's Patreon if you like the Black Series like I do and you want to do a little more. If you do end up getting into 3D printing, this will more than likely be the software that you use, which is Cura. This is like what everyone recommends to use. I, again, this is not a tutorial, but just to show you, you know, I can import the Cantina chair. And there's a bit of a learning curve because you see this little lip right here that this side doesn't have, this side is flat. This is where you would have to like rotate it. And this is where the learning curve comes in. You have to think how the printer would think. So this would actually be the correct way to print the chair with this lip here on the bottom. And then there's a separate piece that you would glue on top of that because, you know, for example, and I've made this mistake as well. If you have the lip there on top, that extra bit of space would just be printing onto thin air and you don't want that. So again, there's a bit of a learning curve, but hey, this is not a tutorial. This was also where you would mess with like your print quality, you know, how small the lines are going to be, your layer height, your infill, which is important, your speed and temperature and everything. So if you do end up getting into 3D printing, this will more than likely be the software that you use. All right, I've showed you the printer, the sort of filament that I use. I've showed you Thingiverse and Landspeeder Luke's Patreon and sort of what I've been up to over there. Now, all that's left to do is to take a look at my actual projects that I've been working on so far. All right, getting into some non-Star Wars stuff. This is the kitten that they actually have you print when you first set up your printer. This is essentially a test print that is done with a very cheap spool of like beginner white filament that is included with the printer. They have you print this little cat. I did print this Stranger Things keychain. This was in that same spool of the, the beginner spool of white. I made this for my girlfriend, little Stranger Things keychain, printed it in white and just sharpied it. Printed this Game of Thrones bookmark with the dire wolf of House Stark. It was supposed to say winter is coming right there, but it did kind of mess up, but you can still make it out and I literally just use it as a bookmark, so it's fine. I've been reading A Clash of Kings, so works out perfectly fine. Some spooky ghosts as Halloween decorations. They're just, you know, hollow on the inside, cut out at the eyes. And then my first thing Star Wars was actually this tray with the drink from the unfortunate shore trooper who lost his life when he was just trying to eat his lunch. This is that same like beginner filament. That's why it's just white. You know, I had to go with the cantina set starting off with this chair. Really nice. Use the chocolate brown for the chair. I love all the line work, you know, how the chair is ribbed just like the movie. And of course you have the table with the light on it. And this is what it looks like when it's all said and done much better than the cardboard cutout that Hasbro did a few years back. I just love the fact that you get something physical with this. But man, what a great scene. This is the original Orange Line Greedo and this is the Power of the Force re-release with the photo reel deco. Knew I had to get that one for this scene. Again, guys, subtle, you know, two chairs and a table, but 
it enhances the display. It complements pre-existing figures. That's my mission. All right, here is the band stage. I got to go a little handheld here to get all of the angles. Two steps. And I took some of my own liberties with the arch. Not painted the best, but hey, is the Wretched Hive of Scum and Villainy really going to pay for that professional of a paint job? Got the Twin Suns logo here in space gray. This was what got me into 3D printing right here. I don't know why, I just love it. It is two separate pieces right here, and you can tell it ever so slightly it didn't print all that even on this side. Same thing with down there. I have heard you could stick some putty in there, paint it. Maybe I'll do that one day, but it looked pretty good. It actually took me a few tries to get a piece this even, so I'm happy with how it turned out. Here's a quick shot of everyone jamming out. We got the modal nodes here. Serves its purpose exactly as I wanted it to. I really liked working on this. I tend to choose projects that don't require paint or a heck of a lot of paint. And Landspeeder Luke has plenty of files that don't require any paint at all. Just, you know, different colors of filament. And I think for a beginner, that is what you should get into, especially if you have no painting experience like I do not. Speaking of painting, quick side note, I did also print Jabba's dais. However, that is actually in Nate's possession at the moment until he paints it. All right, up next, we have the Return of the Jedi Emperor's window and sort of the platform and some stairs. I took some of my own liberties. I did the brackets in space gray. The steps are in light gray, and then the actual window itself is in black. And just look at that. It, that printed so nicely. I'm very happy with how that turned out. Super iconic design. It's not that big. This is definitely not 1 12th scale, but again, it complements the figure. It enhances the display a bit. Here is the Emperor shooting off some force lightning on top of the platform. Unfortunately, the throne doesn't look that good on it. His feet kind of dangle off. It would require a larger printer to actually make this file a 1 12th scale item. But I think just putting a figure or two on it is going to help like the Emperor with Force Lightning or something. Or I don't know. Let's put Vader on. Not bad. Not bad. Maybe you can put Luke facing him on the bottom step or something. You know what I mean. There was no way I could get into 3D printing without doing some of the hexagon display stands. Again, from Landspeeder Luke's Patreon. These are awesome because they come with separate bases with like the little foot clips to peg the feet of your figures in. So if you grab one, it's not going to come out and wreck the entire display. Let's take a look at how it would be populated. All right, here's a quick example I whipped up from some random Imperials on the shelf. Each figure gets seen properly, displayed properly. And hey, if you wanted to grab a figure without disturbing from the rest, you can do that because it's attached to the base. You can put them right back too. Check that out. Really, really cool display solution. And here's the thing, you guys. Most of these little projects I've done are fairly easy. They require little to no paint. There are tons of files that require no paint that you can just do based on what color of filament you're using. In this particular instance, this is a light gray, which is sort of a Star Wars, you know, imperial color. So I thought that looked pretty cool for an imperial display. These projects are surprisingly easy if you get the right settings and everything. It's not as complex as you might think it is. But yeah, these are all of the projects I've been working on so far. Unfortunately, space is limited. I don't have my own figure room yet. But when I do, you already know I'm going to start more projects. In conclusion, I have been having an absolute blast. If I'm being completely honest, 3D printing is a lot more, dare I say, simple than I thought it would be at first. There is a pretty big learning curve, but... I feel like a lot of people just look at it as like this daunting task of like IT coding or networking or something. It is not that complex. 
Full disclosure, Landspeed or Luke, he is a friend outside of the channel, so it's been nice to have like a 3D printer expert on like 3D printing hotline speed dial to help me out with any issues but that would be what I recommend you do as well. Get yourself a mentor. Aside from Lane Speeder Luke, I would also like to give a shout out to Kaylin Newhouse and Craft3D Creations, both in our Discord. And I would recommend you getting a mentor or two like that that will answer questions and just help you through the process. So shout out to them as well. Ultimately, I would recommend jumping in if you are wanting to get into 3D printing in general. It is not as complex as you might think. And you might be surprised by how plug and play it is. You know, just get the files, put it in, balance your bed and hit print. But yeah, it's been an absolute blast. I'm glad I got into it and I hope you guys do as well. That'll be it for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Again, everything I'm talking about is going to be linked in the description of this video. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit a like on this video and subscribe if you are new. We are always talking about Star Wars The Black Series here on the channel. If you'd like to support us in a more direct way, we do have a channel membership for 99 cents a month. There is a link to that in the description as well. Merch, link in bio, join that Discord. A lot of great things going on in that Discord. We show off a bit more custom stuff in the Discord as well, so make sure to hit join. I've been Justin from Out of the Basement, and we will see you guys next time.